Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will die till the day is done. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Let me sing it my way. There is not an hour that he is not near us. No, not one. No, not one. No night so dark, but his love can cheer us. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There is not a friend like the holy Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus gave a during rain of Google, my language. He gave a rain in my name. Odi yeni di kanai Jesus. Odi motu ye. Jesus knows. All about our struggle. He will guide till the day is done. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. The eight is the Lord. And the fullness thereof. Man and all that dwell in it. Who founded it upon the seas, established upon the floods. Who will dwell upon the holy hill of the Lord, he that has clean hands and pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessings of the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek thee, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your head, O ye gates, you everlasting doors, for the king of glory cometh. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord of hosts is the king of glory. Lift up your head, O ye gates, you everlasting doors, for the king of glory cometh. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts he is the king of glory. Emmanuel, please. Thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory. Thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory. Hallelujah. Thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory. Thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory. For the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. Therefore, who are you? Mountain before Zerubbabel. Thus says the Lord, it shall be made plain. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The eight is the Lord's. There is so much war for the soul of the eight. So much war. There are people who are dedicated. There are people who are dedicated to make sure that Jesus will not return to the earth. So many churches are building empires to make sure that they occupy land. There is um, something um, that reminds me of scripture where, uh, is it Jeremiah or something to say, 
uh, what to do so join has to have Join. Isaiah 5 8 says, To those who add house to house and join field to field until there is no more room, and you alone are left in the whole land. Are you alone left in the land? Woe to them that join house to house that lay field to field, that till there be no room, and you made to dwell alone in the midst of the land. You know what I mean? There are people who, whose single purpose is to make sure that they are the people that occupy everywhere. That they are the people that occupy everywhere. Excuse me, Manuel, please don't sleep. I'm sorry. There are people who, whose mission is to make sure that they are the people who occupy everywhere. Houses, okay, there's a building church, 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 church everywhere. Not because they are teaching right, right doctrine, but they want to make, according to one of them said, we want to make a show of us. We want to make sure that um, any Christian will bow to us. We want to make sure that um, everywhere it is, it's us, not about the kingdom of God, but this is a church. At least, let me just mention it's RCCG. The, the um, Adiboye has said it with his mouth that every Christian in across the uh, everywhere will bow to RCCG people, that other people are going to beg them for food. This has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. So, this is what I'm saying. You know, but the Bible, they, there are people, there is war for the soul of the earth, war for the soul of the earth. Some people want to be, it is us, it is us. You know, um, the cultic societies are making sure that it is them, it is them. There are, but the eighth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, that's what the Bible says. And the Lord Jesus is the king over all the earth. And the word of God said that Jesus, that God, um, that God will exalt his mountain above all mountains, above all the hills. If we see in the world, you know, nations are fighting against nations because they want to be the people to occupy everywhere. They want to be the most powerful nation. But the word of God said that God will exalt his kingdom above all, uh, above uh, his mountain, above all mountains, above all the hills, and the inhabitants of the earth shall flow to the mountain of the lost house, to the house of God of Jacob. One city shall say to the other, let us go speedily into the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his but for out of Zion shall go for the law and the word of God from Jerusalem. Because he will magnify the law and he will make it honorable. So the word of God said that the kingdom is the Lord and he is the governor among the nations. Even though there is war for the soul of the earth, even though people are trying to become the most powerful nation, people are trying to become the most powerful church, people are trying to become the most powerful personalities on earth, people are trying to drive other people, kill other people, and take their land. The word of God said that Jesus Christ, that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, and he alone shall reign forever. For the kingdom is the Lord, and he is the governor among the nations. The earth is the Lord. There, there is only one Lord that will govern the whole earth, the law of God. For the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of God from Jerusalem. Therefore, no matter who uh, people are supporting in political arena or this or that or that or that, the kingdom is the Lord, and his law shall be the governing law. You know, there is something I posted earlier here, something I just posted. I want us to talk about it. When the John the Baptist came to preach, he started by saying, make the cruel parts of the law straight. Make the cruel parts of the law straight. The first person that said that was Isaiah. The first person that said that was Isaiah. Isaiah 40, verse 4. Please, you know, quickly read it. Isaiah 40. There are 40. Let me see. Lord of hosts, you are with us, with us in the fire. 
with us as a shelter, with us in the storm. Oh, oh you will lead us through the faces battle. Oh, where is will we go? But we the Lord of us. Now, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 says, The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooks shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of God shall be revealed. And who else said this thing? Who else came preaching? Make the group part of the Lord straight was John the Baptist. I don't know where I'm going to get it now. John the Baptist saying, Make because he was the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, saying, Make the group part of the Lord straight. Uh, let me see, John the Baptist. Look, look, 3 5. He said. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked way shall be made straight, and the rough places make me. And all humanity shall see. That is um, Luke 3, 4 to 5. And then um, the soldiers came and asked, every valley shall be filled in. Let's just keep going. Every valley shall be filled in, and every... I'm reading from Berean Bible, Standard Bible. And every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked way shall be made straight, and the rough way smooth. And all humanity shall see God's salvation. John said to the crowds coming out, You brood of vipers, that is the, he was talking to the Pharisees. So the soldiers came and said, How can we, you know, he told them what to do. The people, different people were coming and asking John, How are we going to do this? He told them what to do. What John was actually referring them to was the, um let me get this thing let me just get it from my my study what john was actually giving them is the commandments of god let me get it from john luke chapter luke what luke chapter three Okay. Okay, verse 10. Luke chapter 3 from verse 10. And he said, people, Luke 3, verse now I have read, you know, make the group part of the Lord's trade. Then verse 10 says, and the people asked him, saying, What shall we do? He answered and said to them, He that has two coats, let him impart him that had none. And he that has meat, let him do likewise, that he shall what he have. Then came also the publicans to be baptized and said, Master, what shall we do? And he said, Exact no more than what that which is appointed to you. You know, there's a place the word of God said that God hates, the Bible said that false balance is abomination to God. That's what he's saying here. You know, just give good balance. Whatever, if you ask, like um, some people lie in tax papers. I used to lie in tax papers. You know, I used to lie in tax papers because, you know, because. I don't have W2 form. I'm not doing any government job. So, so during the tax season, they give W2 form and you report your earning into the tax. And because I don't have, so what I do is, I do what some people do. You know, when, during the tax season, I will calculate how much I'm supposed to make in a year by myself. It, you know, I didn't even regard that lie as lie. I will just calculate, you know, I want to get a maximum refund, okay? I want to get a maximum refund from the government. So I will, I will ask the tax person to just keep maximizing until you come to a point where I will get certain maximum refund. Since I don't have W2 form, just put any figure there that will give me money. So it was happening until one day the Lord showed me my fingers. He showed me different rings in my fingers. He said that the devil has taken over my fingers that I've been lying on the tax papers. I said, whoa. You know, the Bible said that false balance is abomination to God. This happened many years ago, more than 10 years ago. False balance is abomination before God. So what I was doing was false balance. I was not giving the accurate 
numbers. False balance is abomination to God. That's what John the Baptist was saying here. And since then, I just, I said, God, okay, when God confronted me, the Holy, I thank God that the Holy Spirit confronted me. Imagine he confronted me. I did the face, I did my tax without doing all that. So instead of getting 5,000, 6,000 refund, I started getting like, like $400, $600. It doesn't matter to me. I said the truth. And from there, the Lord started making things right for me. So what God does is that as long as you are on the right path, God will provide. He is our source anyway. He makes sure that we will not lack. He makes sure. So the Lord made a way where there is no way. So that's what John the Baptist is saying here. John is saying um, from verse 10, the publicans, that is the tax collectors, Master, what shall we do? And he said to them, exact no one that, that which appointed unto you. If you are collecting taxes, collect the exact amount that is asked you. Don't, if the tax is, if the tax, if you are collecting tax from poor people or from people, and they ask you to collect, let me say, $100. Collect just $100 and depend on the government to pay you. Don't say, well, if you just add $50, I will make it speedy for you. Like some people are doing in, in Nigeria passports. You see people standing in the passport or by the passport office telling you, okay, it's 5,000. Passport, if the passport is 5,000, you end up paying 25,000, 30,000 because people are there confusing you. They don't want you to go straight into the tax office. They are there manipulating things for you. And it's just because they want to collect money from you. Okay, so John the Baptist is saying, do not, just do what, if you are a, if you are in a position to receive money from people to do things, just do the right thing. Collect exactly what is appointed to you. You see, one thing, I, just as I said, it is God that blesses us. It is not because of our smartness. So don't mago mago things to make things to work for you. You know, keep your hand clean. Keep your, keep your password. The meaning of righteousness is called, stay, you know, straight. Is uh, Zedek. Oh, no, a second. My battery is going low. The Hebrew meaning for righteousness is Zedek. Imana, can you give me um charger? It's called Zedek, uprightness, straight. Righteousness means Zedek, straight. Righteous, upright, straight. That is what righteousness means, to be straightforward. Oh, excuse me, I'm looking because my battery is going down. Imana, can you give me charger? Excuse me. Imana, give me phone charger. I'm sorry. So the meaning of righteousness, as I say, the Hebrew meaning means Zedek. Like you say, Meshi Zedek. Meshi Zedek means king of righteousness. Adon is Zedek, Lord of Righteousness. Adon means Adon, Lord. Right, Zedek, Righteous, Lord of Righteousness. Meshi Zedek, King of Righteousness. So the path of the Lord is part of righteousness. It's a straight path, you know. So what we do is that many, what, okay, let's just finish reading John. I can explain more of the things I'm trying to say. So, and the soldiers demanded him saying, what shall we do? And he said unto them, do violence no man, neither accuse any falsely. Be content with your wages. Be content with your wages. You see all these people who will stand, police people in Nigeria, who will stand on the highway. You know, I remember <laughs> sometime when I was in Nigeria, I remember one day after three days fasting, dry fasting, I decided to take a trip by faith. I was taking a trip by faith. I said that God who brought Daniel out of the lions. I'm sorry for my, let me just get charger, please. So, so I said to myself that God, who brought Daniel out of the lion's den, you know, is going to was going to make me to travel by air without paying any money, because I, I didn't have money and God wanted me to travel. 
I said, okay, God is going to make a way for me where there is no way. I was going to put God to test through his word. So I went out on a journey, you know. As I was going, I was meditating on the word of God. So by meditating on the word of God, I joined the line. You know, I was going, when I get to a point where there is a checking point, I said, God, it is written, you make way where there is no way. So make way for me here right now where they are checking people because I don't have a ticket, but I'm going to enter that flight. So when I just say that, you know what? When I get there, they will bypass me and call the person next to me. So I went and entered the line. This thing happened to me twice. I went and entered, so I passed all the checking points by faith and joined the line to climb the air. Remember, by the time you're entering the flight, they will still check your ticket. So when they got to the point of checking my ticket, so I don't have to. Ticket. I want to get to Port Harcourt. No, 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 no. We don't do that. We get power from my both. I said, from God? No, 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 no. I said, God, well, this flight you will never leave in Jesus' name without me. This flight you will never leave in Jesus' name without me. I have gone too far. God, you have to put me in the flight because it is said that the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof. You make way where there is no way. So use you at the way. Put me in this flight. So the person who, it happened to me twice. The person who wanted to, who was saying no to, me who was saying no to me could not leave as the flight was raving i said father in jesus name i must enter this flight father in jesus name, i will enter this flight and then it was the man would go and come back because he would be the one to give final order she was just waving and they would leave and then he would go and come back go and come back and he said to me ma'am if not for god if not for god i wouldn't have allowed you to enter that flight just enter I had my baby, so I entered. <laughs> Remember, I am doing these things by faith. So I entered, I arrived Port Harcourt. Mm. Now, in Port Harcourt, I had to leave that. I didn't have money. I had to leave the airport by faith. So I got there, I stood there. Cabs were coming. Mom, are you going? I said, mm. I said, God, you have to bring me a, a car to take me out of here. I know you can do all things. All things are possible with you. You can do all things. You know, I was just following the Lord. So I, after some time, one man came to me and said, why not follow the American woman who hired two cabs? She has rented two cabs and one cab is driving almost empty. Ask her to pick you up. They are going to Abba. Okay. So I went to the woman. The woman said, don't talk to me. I just came from America. I don't know how you guys operate here. You can talk to the driver. I called the driver. The driver wanted to say no. Another driver is to say, just allow her. So on the way, on the way, they stopped us. They started, they asked the man, bring your card, bring your um, driver's license, bring your this. They're just wasting our time. Bring your, they're just trying to make that man to try to bribe them. Bring your driver's license. Bring your uh, registration. Bring your... Uh, they're just wasting time. So the man just gave him 100. That was then, no, 1993 or 94. The man just gave him 100 naira and said, please count it because I want to follow because he was running behind the other one. We are the people that we have stopped. The man looked at the 100 naira and then went and called the supervisor. He said, pack your car this side. You have violated our law. Our law is that we don't want anybody giving us bribe. Okay. Sorry. We made a mistake. What do you want us to do? Give us 5,000 naira. I said, what? If you are going to forgive the man, discharge and acquit. What are you doing? You don't want bribe. You made it violent. Thousand, where is where in your law? You see, they are exacting. They are ex they are using that we don't give. You know, we are trying to stop bribery to exact extort money, real money, thousands from people. Well, you know, I just came out from fasting, so when I speak, I was speaking more from the Holy Spirit. I was speaking more. My word was going you know, more like a, a sword. But eventually, we left. what I'm trying to make out here is. The, the how you know the people that's what john the baptist is saying here about extortion do not extort do not use it happens in the ministry 
People using manipulation, manipulation to extort money from church. If you want this thing to happen, you have to sow a seed of so, so much money for God to do it. They, some televangelists used to do it, or they do it. If you want God to cover you this year, you must give God $1,000 to cover you this year. And um, if you don't want a huge miracle, then you give God $100. They just negotiate for you before God. That's what John the Baptist is saying. Do not exact. Do not distort. Do not use manipulation. Just trust the Lord. Just do the work God has called you to do. And trust God. If God said, take money, take. If God didn't say that, don't manipulate. Don't, don't, don't do things. Mago, mago. That is making the straight path of the Lord. Crooked, crooking the straight path of the Lord. The straight path of the Lord is part of righteousness. Is the part of uprightness. And then that is what we're saying here. Uh, false balance is abomination before God. Now, I want to... The word of God said that the law shall go forth from Zion. The law shall go forth from Zion. That's why I we need to understand. The word of God said that God will magnify the law and make it honorable. So what is that law? That law, the, what is the righteousness of God? The righteousness of God is found in his law. In the moral laws he gave to Moses, the law and the prophets. That's why Jesus said that heaven and earth will pass away, not a jot, not a, a, a stroke of the God's law will pass away. It's not just 10. Remember, the law of God is 613. It's not like, okay, so it is a guide to the life. It is way of life. You see there we say, do not go up and down as a tell bearer among your people. Where we say, do not bear grudge against your neighbor. Where it says, if a, your neighbor's ox falls into the hole, you go and bring it out or goes astray, bring it back. You say where it says, if somebody, if you, you know, you know the law of restoration and restitution. Some people will just right now. People will do things, do things. I come to someone and say, "Forgive, forgive me, forgive me." And people say, "Forgive, forgive." It is not that you wouldn't forgive, but God wants restitution to happen in that, that forgive. For instance, if you steal somebody's thing, that's why I say, if a, if if you catch a thief, if a thief steals in order to satisfy his hunger, when he is caught, he will pay double. Is it not what the word said? That is New Testament. You know, so the law of restitution goes into four times paying back. That's why Lazarus, when he came to the Lord Jesus Christ, when Jesus came to his house, Lazarus said that if I have exact, exact, you no, know, he was a tax collector that was extorting money from people. So Lazarus said that he will give fourfold. And it, you know, Jesus came to his household. Jesus did not even bet because he saw the Lord. The Lord is righteousness. So the law of righteousness began to operate in him. And Lazarus said that if uh, Zacchaeus, that's Zacchaeus. Let me read what Zacchaeus said. Let me see if I can. And get it. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing. Mm -hmm. He was a chief, a chief tax collector. So let's look 19. And he said, likewise to him, be that also like. Now, let me just paraphrase. We all know the story of Zacchaeus because it's like giving me some 19, 1 to 10. Okay, verse 8 says, Lord, behold, Lord, half of the half of my goods I give to the poor. That's what God says, giving to the poor. If you have two goods, give half, give one to the neighbor. Zacchaeus was following God's law. If you have two goods, give one to your neighbor. That doesn't have and take one. If you have me, you share what you have. So Zacchaeus was following the laws of God, the laws of Moses. He said, Zacchaeus said, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So Zacchaeus is following God's law. Then when he talked about when Zacchaeus 
talked about this restriction of giving back for food. Okay, let me see. Show you. Exodus chapter 22, verse 1. If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it and sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up and a be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. That's for a thief. If the son be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he has nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft be certainly found in his under life, whether it be ox or ox or sheep, he shall restore double. You see, Zacchaeus was following God's order of things when he said, Lord, if I have I will, I, 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 half of my goods I give to the poor and I have taken away anything by a false accusation, I restore fourfold. He was exact, fourfold, exact. And the Lord Jesus said, this day salvation has come to this house. This day salvation has come to this house. You see, it is by that restitution that the salvation actually came. It's not only through just repentance, but restitution by making the crook path straight. He has decided that he's going to turn away from his mago mago way of doing things by extorting things from people. So they, that's what the, John the Baptist, um, that the soldiers you know, don't go further you know, than what is given to you, just as I talked about the police officers. They are, those people on the road are pay, being paid, even if they are not paying you much. Just be content with that because the Lord is the total source of your supply. You don't have to take bribe and and work against the law. Nobody doesn't have to pay you. Uh, if the law says you must check somebody's driver's license and the person doesn't have, then bring the person to order. Don't collect money to distort, to um, neglect what you're supposed to do. So, now, let me go into what I wanted to say more. We see that the Lord Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, Would to you, scribes and Pharisees, for you that is a hypocrite, for you hold the keys of the kingdom. You are not entering and you're not letting somebody else to enter. What did they do? They were just as Jesus said, they are the, the seat on Moses' seat. They, they are the handlers of God's law. But they are not doing what the law says. They are teaching their oral tradition. They make tradition out of God's law. They are they are teaching their tradition. And they are not, so they are misleading the people. Now, there's something I just put, put on my Facebook. There is something I put on my Facebook. They, we are correcting, God wants us not to add or subtract from his law or from his word. But this we are adding and subtracting. And the worst is that those changes they made in the scripture is leading thousands and millions to hell. For instance, they said in the gospel, you will see where he said, make friends with mammon of unrighteousness so that when you fail, they will take you to their everlasting habitation why would jesus ask you to do that why would you ask you to make friends with when the some bible say that friendship with the world is friendship with the world is what enemy to god and then jesus asks you to make friends with mammon of unrighteousness so that when you fail they will take you to their everlasting habitation oh does it make sense what is the everlasting habitation of mammon of unrighteousness Hell. So why would Jesus ask you to follow you know, um, evil people to hell? Because of their money. When Jesus said that, that we should not worry for anything, we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else will be added to us. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, make not friends. So what the scribes and Pharisees we are doing is that they we are adding and removing from the gospel. From the word of God. Jesus said, call them hypocrites, that they have the keys of the kingdom. They are not entering. So they were not making the the the, 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 um, the straight. They are not making the 
the path of God's strength. Jesus did not ask us to make friends with mammon of unrighteousness. He said, make not friends. Because James said, James is the brother of Jesus, was the brother of Jesus. He said, and he was the bishop of the church in Jerusalem. He said, friendship with the world is a enmity with God. And God also, in God's law, we are not supposed to, we say, so what relationship has light with darkness? What accord has the temple of God with birth? So why would God ask you to make friends? Like if somebody is a ritualist or somebody is um very corrupted politician and God will ask you to go and make friends with them so that when you fail, they will take you. They will take you under their shadow, under their wing, and bring you to their everlasting habitation. Yeah. Yes supposed to bring them to the light they are not so those are the things that scribes and pharisees we are doing then we are adding and subtracting there is a place jesus said there's a place jesus said jesus did not say i did not bring peace to the world he didn't say that jesus did not say i did not bring peace to the world to the, the sword jesus said i brought peace to the world but when i speak sword follows i saw this in the original gospel so, so they are making they are crooking the so because they said that Jesus said because Jesus is the prince of peace. He said, My peace I give to you, not as the world giveth, I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. And Jesus is the peace of the world. Jesus is the prince of peace. By his stripes we are we are healed. When Jesus was born, the angel said, Peace to the world. The Savior is born. Joy to the world, the Savior is born. And peace on men towards peace towards men on earth. Jesus is the peace of the world. He is the prince of peace. He was he he, is, he came for reconciling the world to God. He is the peace. Peace is shalom, wholeness. So Jesus did not say that he did not bring peace to the world. You know what? Why I have to pick up this thing is because many killings, many murders going on in the world today, especially religious murders is because they said that Jesus said he did not bring peace. So they kill in the name of God. In Nigeria, these people call IPOB. Namdi was telling them, they were saying, okay, how can we say we, that a man that said he did not bring peace to the world, how can you follow him? So they asked Igbo people, too many Igbos have fallen away from the faith. Just because of that scripture. That Jesus said he did not bring peace to the world. So Namdi was Namdi or that leader was always asking them to kill the people he considered to be saboteurs or people they say they are doing civil disobedience. And then they told them that Jesus Christ is that how can they follow a man that said he did not bring peace? That after all, he said that Jesus is the God of the white people, that Jesus is not our God, that they are returning to tradition. To their ancestral tradition to worship there. So they started reviving idol worship in Igbo land. They started reviving idol worship in Igbo land, reviving the worship of thunder and lightning, reviving the, and they are mandating people that when they establish this, their Biafra, that everybody is going to worship this own God. If you don't do that, that nobody will worship anything the name of jesus will not be brought into Igbo land that the bible will never be brought into Igbo land or if you try it if you try you will see experiment those are their words because now they are using and killing our people killing themselves because jesus said i did not bring peace to the world you see so these things are misleading those corruption they did they, they made the the part the straight part of the law they crooked it so, you know, I studied English and literary studies. Most of these things I see in the scriptures, I, I can't tell question myself, why would, why would this happen? Because I studied, I analyze things. That's my, it's part of me. It's what I studied. Why would Jesus say, okay, why would Jesus say it is not what enters the man's mouth that defies him? Can somebody eat, go and eat unclean things like, I got you understand what I'm saying, and it do not defy you. Can someone go and eat frog? All these unclean things, and it do not destroy you. I was still wondering, why did God say? Why did God acknowledge 
finished Daniel. When Daniel said, I would not defy myself with a portion of the king's meat, nor the good food on the king's table. Why did why was Daniel commended for deciding not to eat things that would defy him? Why did God give list of in Deuteronomy 14? These are clean foods, these are unclean foods. Why did God say, Eat this, don't eat this? So, why would now Jesus say, It is not what enters a man's mouth that will define him, but what comes out? So, I began to mix research. Then I found out that what Jesus did, Jesus did not say that. Jesus said that unclean things that enter a man defies him. So, also, unclean things that come out of him also defy him. But eating food with washed hand or unwashed hand does not make anybody unclean. This is because the Pharisees have a tradition of washing of hands, which is they call the tradition of the elders. And they accuse Jesus that, you know, Jesus always answers people based on what they say. If you ask him questions or confront him, he will answer you based on what you just said. So when they said, um, why do your disciples Eat with unwashed hands. There is no, no place in the law of God that says that you will, you will be defied if you read the laws of Moses, read the prophets. There is no place that says that you will. Remember, New Testament was not, Gospels were not made uh, written and the, so what they were using were the prophet and the law, the law and the prophets. So there is no place it is said in the law and the prophet that if you do not wash your hands with water when you want to eat food that you will be defied it is never anywhere in the law so now they confronted jesus why do your disciples no not eat foods no eat food without washing of their hands observing the tradition of the elders did they hear that that's why jesus said to them by your tradition you have made void the word of god you have made void the commandments of God by your tribe. So people think that Jesus is against the commandments of God. No, Jesus was fighting because of the, the traditions of men. The Sabbath. Jesus is not was not against Sabbath. He was not because Jesus was always doing the work of God on Sabbath. He was entering the synagogue and doing the as it was his custom. But the Pharisees have a law they made by the tradition. On how to keep the Sabbath, and uh, which is not according to God's law, and um, the Sadducees have their own law. Jesus was making things right, so the disciples were plucking corn in the field and eating. They were not working. They were not doing job. They were not cooking. They were hungry. And they were just plucking corns and eating. That is not against the law of God. It's not. So, what if they were not buying or selling? God is against buying or selling on the Sabbath day. God is against bringing things to sell in the house of God on the Sabbath during church service. People will go outside and start selling stuff, or after service they sell. That is against the law of God. God is not against picking things. That is prepare your thing, say whatever you want to bake, bake it, whatever you want to cook, cook it before Sabbath. Then when you know you can microwave your food on the Sabbath and eat, we don't cook. It's against the law of God. So Jesus was not so when we read the Bible, times we think that we, God Jesus is the same Jesus said to the rich young ruler, keep the commandments and you shall live. You shall live. If you want to live, keep the commandments. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, not a judge, not the title of the a stroke of the word of, of the commandments shall pass away. Jesus is the law. He is the word of God. And then when I took time to read the gospel of the 11, gospel of the Holy 12, I saw it on the internet. And he said that when the church fathers were destroying scriptures and, you know, during the council of Nicaea, they were manipulating pieces. Christianity was the religion of Roman Empire, so they were trying to make things to fit into the state's religion. So they gave us what they want to give us. You know, they gave us, and Paul's writing, we are kind of favoring the Roman Empire version of Christianity. 
So in, you see, Paul say, eat whatever is sold in the market, buy whatever. They, don't ask patients if whatever I said before you eat. Don't. And the Romans actually had a lot of, of idols. And before they cook, kill their meat or whatever, they sacrifice it to their idols. So, and then and when uh, there's a lot of things, a lot of things are happening that in the background that are affected the writing of the scriptures. A lot of things we are happening at that time. So, you know, that's why, you know, like in English, when we read something, we try to know the setting of what we are reading. That is where, on, like if I'm reading about, about like Chino Achebe, one book, as I'm reading, I try to know on what background, what time, what, what was happening when this book was written that affected the mindset of the writer. So that is it in the Bible, the New Testament. What was the background? What was happening during the time Paul was writing? What was happening during the time Jesus was there? Why would Jesus speak? How? So in during the time of Jesus, there are a lot of school of thoughts. Pharisees, Pharisees, Hillel, um, um, like Hillel say, Hillel asks uh, Jesus, the Hillel school of law, as Jesus, each of these schools is telling you how to interpret God's law. And they make tr traditions. The Hillel school asks Jesus something like, is it okay to divorce a, a, a man, to divorce his wife for any reason? Remember, any reason, for any cause. To divorce your wife for any cause. That is healing. That because they were teaching that a man can, can divorce his wife for any reason, any reason you like, just divorce. Jesus, Jesus now answered them based on their on that question. That is it in the beginning, was it made will not made man and you know, husband and wife, well, man and the woman. For this question, a man leave his son and his mother. That no one should divorce his wife except force of fornication. So, so um, when we read, we pray that God will. One of the ways to help ourselves when we are reading some of the things that confuse us, because as a, a high school student those days, you know that is when I was in when I graduated from secondary school, by high school. You know, I had during my high school days, I had a school daughter uh, whose mother. That was um, a voodoo in a marine from marine kingdom. Her mother was a, a high priestess of marine kingdom. She was my school daughter, and I was avoiding their food. I was carefully avoiding them until I get, got to a scripture that Paul wrote in First Corinthians chapter ten, where Paul said that when you, an unbeliever, invites you to a feast. When a non-believer invites those who do not believe, invite you to a feast that you are disposed to go, you go. Whatever is said before you, eat without asking questions. For God. that is pretend, pretend that what is there is not there. That is it. Pretend that you don't know. So don't ask questions for conscience' sake. So based on that scripture. I said, well, um, well, uh, I can eat their food anyway. Even though I knew that this woman was um, a, marine, a priestess of marine kingdom. So I could eat their food pretending I didn't know that this woman was sacrificing their chicken to marine kingdom. And then come and kill it, cook it and give us to eat. You know what I mean? So... You see that that scripture was not right. Why? Because in Numbers chapter 25, in Numbers chapter 25, because if you read Exodus chapter 34, let's read together, please. Exodus chapter 34. These are the testimonies that God wrote on the tablet of stone. Exodus 34. Okay, let's read verse 12. These are the ten, these are the actual ten commandments. What we call ten commandments is Exodus 34. It's called the tab 
tablet of testimonies. You will see it from the beginning. It was testimony of Christ. So 34 verse 11 said, 12 said, Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. You shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a warring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods. And one call you, and thou eat of the sacrifice. They are that. This is God warning them to be careful not to eat. That means you don't even say, kill them. Destroy their altars. Remove them from the land. So that Okay, let's continue. Verse 16 says, And thou take of, your daughter, of their daughters unto your sons, and their daughters go a warring after their gods, and make thy sons go warring after their own gods. Thou shalt make no... Okay. Don't intermarry. Don't give your daughters to them. Don't give your daughters to them. Don't let their sons marry your daughters. Don't intermarry. Solomon violated that, remember. And that's what destroyed him. So that they will not teach you their bad things so that when if don't intermarry bring destroy the or so that they will not call you to eat into they are like we do new young festival okay new young festival so and that is a sacrifice to the god called ahajoko ahajoko i have found that through prayer god revealed me ahajoko is satan himself so they are making sacrifice to ahajoko and it's they call it new young festival and so if I go that day and cook yam in the name of Iriji festival, I am doing what you call partaking of the of their sacrifice. If I visit a friend, an unbelieving friend that day, or unbelieving neighbor, bring me a yam, bring me food, yam cooked that day, and bring to me to eat for celebration of the New Year festival, or I attend the New Year festival here in America. And cook, they cook food that day and eat. The Bible says that's what God is saying that you are partaking, eating of their sacrifice. That is what Paul was saying to you then. Paul went, okay, let's let's go back to Numbers. Let's go to Numbers. Numbers 25, where God took action. When the house of Israel failed to keep this commandment, God took action. Numbers 25. And the house of Israel abode in Shittim, and the, the people began to commit wardom with the daughters of Moab. Now, Balak, after uh, Balaam, Balaam, Balak hired Balaam to cause the people of God, he failed. He rather blessed them. So what did Balaam do, do this time? As the children of Israel got to a place called Pua, I said they abode in Shittim, so, according to the advice that Balaam, Bala, Balaam gave them, they brought the beautiful daughters of the Moab in the presence of uh, the house of Israel, their beautiful daughters, and they were doing um, a feast for Molech or their Baal. Like in our place, there was a time they did elephant celebration. Elephant. So, it, it was a big feast. So they were doing feast for their Baal. Elephant is Baal. That is, is Baal. So they are doing feast, and the daughters of Moab, they brought the food they were doing, cooked during that feast. Remember that Molech is a sacrifice. They use children to do sacrifice for fertility. They, they put their, they cause the children to pass through the fire of Molech. So that is, they do feast during that time. Somebody's a child's blood has been shed, and then they brought they brought their women, and the the children of Israel began to eat food from the people of Moab, who brought them food. They were eating for the during the sacrifice. They started mixing up. As they are mixing up, they started communicating committing fornication with their daughters, and they also started eating their food. Their sacrifice. Remember, that's what God warned in the law. 
so that they will not go and worry after their gods and they give you their food and you eat of their sacrifice. God warned it. So when they did it, what did God do? God sent the plague in their camp. So um, why they were doing that? 24,000 people died in that plague. But maybe a whole lot of Israel would have died if one of them, uh, one man of Israel went and brought a woman from that camp of the Midianites and brought a Midianitish woman and brought into the house of God, the, um, the door of the house of God. When the children of Israel, when the plague was going and the children of Israel were crying and praying and crying to God, this, this man went and brought a woman from the Midianites and in, on the door where the children of Israel were crying to God. So Phineas, one of the grandsons of um, Aaron, took a javelin and struck both the woman and the man together, and they died. Immediately they died, the plague stopped. God's anger stopped. 24,000 people were already dead. So what did they do? They partook of the Moses said unto the judges of the slay every man, everyone his men that were joined unto Bapo. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought, see, just read it, Numbers 25. So that scripture is asking us, don't eat food sacrificed to idols. So you have to be careful what, who is giving you food and what you are eating. So when you read, um, is this First Corinthians or Second Corinthians 10? You will, if you read the words of Paul there, you will see that Paul was, you know, was looking at that scripture and turning it upside down. He was actually turning that very scripture upside down. Okay, but many of them, say, if you read, there is the one he read, he, he did in uh, eight. He said that you know people eating food, sacrifice with the conscience of idols, just doing it like this, like this, you know. And if, you, if your conscience is strong, you can eat food, sacrifice to idols, you know, as long as you don't believe that God. You know, if you keep listening to those kind of twisting of scriptures, you will fall a victim like me. Because I ate that food. I started eating food with that woman, a uh, woman's daughter. And that woman, the woman was calling my daughter, my daughter. Are you serious? So, that woman was they touch me in a way that is not good. That is what I mean. Is she touched me in a way of a, you know, satanic way. And um, I started having this dream of marrying people and all that stuff. It was after my university education that I went to. During my youth studies, I was having all this, having children in the dream, having sex in the dream, eating food in the dream. I went for deliverance. It was during the deliverance, I saw the man. I wasn't, I wasn't the one talking, but the man was asking questions. I saw he, she was, he was seeing somebody and he was writing something down. So I peeped on what he was writing. Say, when did you come to this body? He said, six years ago. I remember, that woman. How many children do I see? Was it three children? I said, yeah. Wow. You see, what deceived me was the scripture where, let me show you the scripture that deceived me. That's what I'm saying. Make the crew pass of the Lord. So God plainly say it. We should not eat food sacrificed. We should not. He said, we should not intermingle with them. We should not intermarry. We should destroy their altars and everything so that they will not call us and we go and eat of their sacrifice. So now let us read what Paul said here. With them, God was not pleased that we are overthrowing the widow. Now these are the examples. Let me read from verse 8 because that's where he started. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell one day three and twenty thousand. Actually, it was twenty-four thousand, not twenty-three. And you see what Paul said here. Paul said that they committed fornication and twenty-three thousand fell. That was not true. They committed fornication because Paul removed the eating of the food and just put fornication. They committed according to Numbers twenty-five. They said they be committing fornication, and they also were eating the food. Sacrifice to idols because they were doing feast for Molech, for Baal, for Molech. And, and so the children of Israel started joining them in Baal power and they ate food of 
that we are of the feast, they ate food in that feast, and they also committed fornication. Two things, eating and then committed fornication. But Paul just said here, they committed fornication and uh, three and 20,000 fell. It was 24,000 that fell. Neither let us tempt Christ, some of them tempted and were destroyed by serpents, okay? Um, we come down, we come down. Verse 23, he said, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things do not edify. You know, so, so what Paul is saying is, if you read another interpretation, he said, all things are permissive. All things are permissive. That's why I said that Paul was writing for Roman Empire, not for Christ. All things are permissive. Are you serious? But not all things are, all things are unlawful. I can do anything I like. Okay, so then verse 25, he said, Whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat and eat, eat, asking no questions for conscience sake. So Jesus called the Pharisees blind leaders of the blind, blind guys of the blind. So be blind. Whatever is sold in the shambles, eat, ask no questions for conscience sake. Don't be diligent. Don't be designing. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. Pretend there is no law. Okay. For the eight is the laws and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not, remember it was unbelievers that invited the house of Israel to the feast. But Paul is saying here that if any of them, that is, Paul is committing, what do I call it? Rebellion. Yeah. Any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and you be disposed to go. Whatever I said before you eat, ask no questions. Eat. Go to the feast, eat. But God said, don't go to the feast. Don't eat. Paul said, go, eat. So now, what is Paul saying here? He said, but if any, any of them said to you, this is offered sacrifice to idols, eat, eat not for the sake, then don't eat for, this, for their conscience, not your own conscience. You see here, that's why the church in Asia, one of the churches, Jesus said, God said that you still have some of them there. Some of them in that church that partake of the doctrine of Balaam. Remember that Balaam is the one that asked the Midianites to put their beautiful women before the house of Israel and seduce them so that they will sin against God, so that God will deal with them. Because Balaam, Balaam, Balak hired Balaam to destroy them. There was no way to defeat Israel. So the way to defeat them now is to lure them, seduce them, make them to, to break God's law. Let them eat the food. The law says that they should not. They should not go a warring after the daughters of unbelievers. Kill them, remove, destroy their altars, destroy their images, do not intermarry, don't make peace treaty with them, so that they will not deceive you, so that they will not teach you what they are doing, so that they will not call you to their, their feast and you go and eat of their sacrifice. And Paul is saying here directly, direct, if they call you for a feast, go. Whatever they give you, eat. Don't ask questions for conscience sake. But if they must use their mouth to tell you that this thing is sacrificed to idols, then say, oh, why did you give it to me? I'm not eating for your own conscience sake, not for my own. What is it? Does this sound? Is this sound? That's why Jesus was saying, Paul was a Pharisee. The Pharisees and Sadducees, they sit on Moses' seat. They have the key of the kingdom. They are not entering. They are not letting somebody enter. So that is the doctrine of Balaam. So that is how Paul faced it, because he was the one in the Asian going to missionary work in the Asian, Asian churches. So he was the one that was teaching this doctrine of Balaam. He made Christianity so easy. Whatever, just sanctify it and eat, don't worry. Whether you do it or not, everything is permissible. Where there is no law, there is no, there is no transgression. Where there is no law, all those people that think that they are pillars, they, they are pillars in the house, pillars, they don't, they, I labor more than them. I labor more than them. You know, that is, they, I talk about those of the, those of the circumcision whose mouth shall be shut at the disciples of Jesus. That's the apostles he's talking about. So, 
let us when you study the word of god you need to understand that some people made some changes that are leading people astray big astray so we have to be wise we have to know go to the foundation know the things that god said what so that because the these schools of laws they made traditions so no they are not it's, it's like this people we call the Jews or something, you know, most of them don't believe in Christ. They will do this law, they will add and subtract. Jesus called some of them synagogue of Satan. You see, not because they are religious leaders. When God was asking me to be a bishop, a college of bishop called me. And that day, as I stood before them, I saw the very people that Jesus said they have the key. They are not entering. They are not letting somebody. God asked me to be a bishop. I thought they are going to support me. I thought they are supporting the things of God. And they, I realized they are supporting their status quo, their own status, the law they made for themselves. Who can become a bishop and who cannot become? And one of the things they used to condemn me there is that I don't have money, that I was struggling with my children because I know my husband left us, that I was struggling with my children, that I want to bring the money upon my... Not because God did not ask me, but because of of certain things they certain standard they set. I called the bishop and he, look at what these people are saying. Oh, he said they are religious leaders. That that's why Jesus did not when he came. Jesus abandoned the Levites, the priests of the Lord, abandoned all those religious leaders and went and chose fishermen, tax collectors, ordinary people to become his disciples, and he trained them himself. You see. Jesus did not go into Pharisees, the keepers of the law. He did not go to the scribes, the handlers of the law. He did not go to the Levites, the priests of the Lord. He left all of them and went to fishermen, ordinary men, tax collectors, and bring, brought them into the kingdom of God. Mary Magdalene was the first one that saw Jesus when he rose from the dead. You know, and brought them and trained them and made them the pillars, the 12 pillars of the kingdom of God. The New Jerusalem, the 12 gates are the 12 apostles. Paul's name was not there. 12 apostles. He made himself an apostle anyway. That's why the Ephesian church rejected him. So what I'm trying to say here is when you study the word of God, go to the basics. Jesus went to the basic. He went to the law of Moses to know what God said. To the law and the prophets, and to know what God said. Let us. That's why these pastors they have finished the things of God. They have. They don't do it now. They are preaching. We make a show of us. Uh, other people will bow to us. How can a whole general overseer of a church worldwide, a boy, you know, decree that Christians across the the world will bow down to RCCG people? And they screamed, Amen. Food for. And then another place he said, they will beg food from you. And your colleagues will beg food from you that are not allergic to you. Will beg food from you. And they will and we will make a show of us. We will show them of us. They are joining house to house. That is the scripture I read earlier. Woe to those who join land to land. Isaiah 5, 5 8. Woe to, woe to those who who add house to house and join field to field until there is no more room and you alone are left in the land. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field till there be no room and you be made to dwell alone in the midst of the earth, on the midst of the land. We will make a show of them. We will five, five minutes away, another church, five minutes away. And, and what are you teaching them? We will make a show of us. We will show them other Christians across the the world will bow down to us. Woe to such people according to the word of God. You want to be the one occupying everybody because the kingdom of God, the word of God said, God will exalt his mountain above all the mountains, above all the hills, and all the inhabitants of the earth will come to the mountain of the Lord's house. And the law of God shall go forth from Zion and the word of God from Jerusalem. So it's not about I am a member of I'm a member of winners. I'm a member of this. I'm a member. It is about Mount Zion City of God. It is about 
righteousness. Zedek, make the crook part of the Lord straight. Know what the Lord is saying. How to serve God in spirit and in truth. How to become part of God's governmental body. How to be part of the body of Christ in spirit and in truth. How to worship God in spirit and in truth. How to walk on the path of uprightness. The path of righteousness. The path of truth. Because the word of God said that the glory of God shall cover the earth even as the water covers the sea. The word of God said that, you know, that God will bring all nations into his Mount Zion. I want to say this, I said to the let us go speedily into the house of God and into the favor of God of Jacob. God's whole thing is about bringing Christ, the kingdom of God established upon the earth. It's not about any church. It's about his kingdom, a branch of righteousness sitting forth and sitting upon the throne of David, governing the whole earth with righteous judgment for he will magnify his law and he will make it honorable. For the law is the governing law in over the earth. So we thank God for the mercy of God. Heavenly Father, we give, we present, remember the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof. Remember the war is for the soul of the earth. So we commit the earth into the hand of God. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on the earth as it is done in heaven. Because the word of God said that Jesus Christ, that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ and he shall reign forever. The kingdom is not Donald Trump's. The kingdom is not Joe Biden's. The kingdom is not Peter B. The kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations. Let thy kingdom come. Come. Let your will be done on the earth. Let righteousness reign. Let justice reign. Let truth be spring up from the earth. Let the truth of God, Repo C. Kaya be established. Let justice roll down like waters. Let righteousness look down from heaven. Limasi, Koposi, Kaya Zantali, Kapudaba. Let our land be called city of righteousness. Let Limashi, Koposi, Kaya, the mountain of the Lord, be called the holy mountain. Nothing, no uncircumcised in heart and flesh shall enter into the mountain of the lost house. No one who practices abomination or lying shall enter into the mountain of the lost house. For the law of the mountain is most holy. Our land shall be called Hezeba. My delight is in her. Our land shall be called city of truth, city of righteousness, habitation of justice. Hallelujah. Great Paul say, for the king of glory shall Reign for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, and the kingdom of God shall reign forever. Who are you, mountain before Zerubbabel? Thou says the Lord is shall be made plain. Hallelujah! For Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, the Lord at my right hand has stricken through kings in the day of your wrath. Therefore, we rule in the midst of our enemies because Limasi Koposekia, you have made us kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all.